Welcome back to this week's episode of Roland's Perspective. You may notice, Roland, you sound a little down. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you. I was looking for my microphone that I carry around, my lapel mic that I carry around just in case I'm with a friend and we start talking and I'm like, okay, this needs to be an episode. Tell me why I carry that shit in my purse every motherfucking day. And the day that I need it, it's nowhere to be found. And it's little shit like this that makes me start to believe in an enemy. Someone who don't want the word to get out. Someone who don't want what I got to say to get out to the masses. But on the other hand, I'm like, who am I? Like, who would be fighting that hard to not let this come out and it's like first of all who does that even benefit number one nobody because i'm that bitch i'm that shit number one that's what god put a whole lot whole lot of when he was making me that's that shit yeah yeah that's the hot shit yeah semantics is crazy because saying i'm hot shit with like no context that's crazy anyway I'm a little annoyed, but I'm trying to let it go. And mentally, I've, I think I've done a good job of letting it go. I have my headphones on, which actually keep my ears warmer. So I'm looking on the bright side. It's just really annoying how all of a sudden when I need it, it's not here. Like, who did that? Like, what's the what's the meaning of that? What was the point? Literally, what was the point? But you know what? If I don't know something, I'm not supposed to know it. And if I don't need it, And if I don't have something, then I don't need it. So, so it's all good. It's all good in the hood, whatever. I just have to come to terms with the fact that I'm not always supposed to understand everything. And that's okay. I can live in that. And also, this is the best way things can go. But I think I'm having a hard time believing that because I could have looked for it more and fought for it more. And that's something that I constantly struggle with. I don't know when to give up and when to keep fighting. But when it, I don't know. I guess you must take it case by case and there really aren't categories. Especially when everyone has different values. Which is, that's such a big thing to delve into right there. But I could have looked for it more. But also if... I don't have something I don't need it and you usually find things when you stop looking for them and I just know I just know no doubt no certainty I just know that I'm going to find that motherfucking lapel mic after I'm done clicking record on this motherfucking episode Sorry if there's a lot of wind going on. I'm outside. I really wanted to be outside for this one and in the sun. I'm not sure why. I just really wanted to be outside by the trees or something. But it's really cold. (laughs) So it's windy. But I have my big jacket kind of wrapped around the mic. So maybe the wind won't be that bad. Anyway, let's get into this week's topic, which I hope I can get out with the same enthusiasm that I had before I couldn't find my mic, which was just like so much energy within me wanting to come out. And maybe we can start there because I every step of mine is truly and ultimately guided. Truly, I believe that because how did I get here? I wrote down what I wanted to talk about because it actually does help and I'm already going out of order, but when I speak, things perfectly lead to one another. It's like I'm in flow constantly, so I just wanted to share. Anyway, about that energy. See, I don't even feel like I'm giving y'all what I'm supposed to give. Like, I want my fucking lapel mic. Like, Okay, I've changed the the sound input levels so I won't be screaming in your ear as much uh, rip headphone users but not really resurrect because I've I've fixed it I don't have my lapel mic but I do have my headphones mic and my ears are warm and the sound input levels are fine so we can continue and I just pray that the energy and passion I had when when I stepped out the shower 
comes back to me and if not then it's okay because this episode gonna get out whether or not whoever the fuck is trying to keep it from getting out wants it to creative energy as some of you may know I am celibate I've been celibate for almost two months now and in the grand scheme of things that doesn't sound like a long time but y'all when I say I have lived every painstaking day counting because oh my gosh it's (laughs) this shit is not easy this shit is not easy at all y'all like and I've tried so I started it out with like not sleeping with anyone and also no masturbation yeah that's dead I'm sorry that's so dead it does it is so dead because a week and a half in I could already see that I have so much more energy like creative energy I could feel it in my body I have so much creative energy because I intentionally withdrew all of my sexual energy from all of the partners I had in the past and brought it back to myself. And I was like, oh, wow, I feel energized. I feel creative. I feel idyllic. There's a lot happening here. Cool, right? So I do, I'm do. i doing my podcast, finding ideas, you know, getting creative. And I get to a point where I'm like starving, <laughs> y'all I'm starving for a release and I thought I woke up one Friday it was actually last Friday I woke up and I was hungry and then I was hungry so I was hungry for food right cool whatever that wasn't a big deal I was also hungry and I'm so sorry for any of my elders listening for any children that I know listening to this to this I was so hungry to nut, y'all. I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, it was crazy how bad my body wanted it. And it was so different. It was so different. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's really unexplainable. But I was hungry. And so I did it, and I was so glad that I did. I thought that maybe I was trying, see, I was trying to not get to that point. I was trying to do other things. I was trying to ignore it, but I don't know. I feel like I'm in more alignment with my body, and my body really wanted that. So who am I? Who am I to deny myself a pleasure? Who am I to deny myself a pleasure? And when it comes to pleasure, I could really talk all day long because I've been feeling and experiencing pleasure in many facets of life, like taking a deep breath of cold air, doing a yoga stretch that hits just the right spot in my hips, especially Um, twerking is nice, like just getting that sacral chakra moving and open and hot. Those are a few places where I've been experiencing pleasure. It's just like life can be pleasurable and it just doesn't have to be about sex. And so I came and it was really nice and I really appreciated it. It was it was like orgasmic has a new meaning for me now because of how long I waited and how much I tried to not. But at the end of the day, it became about pleasing myself and experiencing pleasure and and finding a way for all of that sexual energy that creative life force energy to go because my friend Kayla told me this which I wasn't aware of she told me that your sexual energy like your sacral energy your sacral chakra that energy doesn't know the difference between putting that energy into like a project a creation an idea or life and sex and making a child your sexual energy is life force energy and look I'm not the one I'm not the one qualified to give you all this information please go do some more research maybe I'll link Heinz video in in the description for this week because he is the reason why I was like okay I want to intentionally be celibate and it's not about not having anyone around to fuck it's just 
I want my energy to come back to me so I can do something with it, so I can live the life that I want. And it's crazy just how much energy I have. It's crazy just how much energy, not even just sexual, but just like, it's just so crazy how energy is really real and energy doesn't lie. And wielding power over your energy is one of the greatest gifts you can give to yourself because I feel like being codependent and anxious about what other people are thinking about you that is poor energy management and it's okay like let's just call it what it is it's poor energy management and I've been there sometimes I'm still there and I have to reel my energy back in and realize hey these people like (laughs) they don't even deserve this level of they don't even deserve this energy like I need to bring it back within me look within me I feel like all of these things are just different layers and ways of saying the same thing the more I learn the more concerned I get with not making sense because sometimes I wonder if like because I get what I'm saying but the way that it comes out (laughs) can people get what I'm saying I hope that it's not only my words that you hear but my energy that you feel and that it you know wraps around you and you go about your day and your life seeing things in a new light I really wish that for you (sighs) so this week slash eclipse season in general has been whooping my ass and I mean that in lessons and ideas and creative energy all in the name of self-love the utmost self-love I have been on a journey of reclaiming parts of myself for a minute. I left school in 2020 because I couldn't handle the stress and I didn't want to. And so I feel like that's kind of spilled over into any ideas I've had and obstacles I've been challenged to overcome. Because let me tell y'all something. High school me, high school Roland was a motherfucking beast, okay? ambitious took on 11 things at a time and was able to crush every single one of them now granted high school Roland was operating on motherfucking autopilot no emotional intelligence no looking at the emotions no putting how I felt first it was very much how I feel is on the back burner and honestly I'm not gonna sit here and lie that helped a lot when it came to motivation because who needs that fuck my emotions fuck how I'm feeling completely we're going to get this shit done. And it was definitely at a detriment to myself and my health. I'm not going to deny that. But I'm also not going to say it wasn't helpful. And this definitely goes back to what I was saying um, last week about not shitting on all of the habits that you've created to survive and to help yourself reach goals and do what it is at that point in your life that you wanted to do. Because At a certain point, being a people pleaser has helped women not die. So I'm not going to sit here and like shit on it completely. There's two sides of the, it's just two sides of the same coin. And the coin being, let's say a certain trait, like being impulsive. Maybe that's not the name. That's not the trait and the manifestation of that, that energy. I don't know. Cause there's being impulsive And that being a bad thing, like, maybe, like, you don't, I don't know, you don't think things through, for example. But on the other side of that, it's that you're adventurous and you go with the flow very easily and you're adaptable. So it's like, you can't really shit on someone for something you don't like because it's just a manifestation of that energy. And if it were manifested in another way, you would probably like that about them. And that in itself, like, you liking someone that all that whole thing has to do with your intention like your perception versus their intention and that's not what we're here to talk about that's a whole a whole other ass topic but when it comes to ideas specifically being celibate has armed me with so much passion y'all so much passion so much passion to the point where I have a great idea every day, but there's something going on with that solar plexus that stops me from igniting that passion energy. Well, not igniting it, but using that passion energy to actually make something. There's something that that stops my ego from going, I can do this and then doing it because the root, the root 
that my mind usually takes, which I'm definitely breaking away from, is, okay, here's an idea. I don't know if I can do that. Let's the idea sit on the back burner and I forget about it. <clears throat> and ever since becoming celibate, that has that has grown immensely and it's something that I can no longer ignore. ignore. It's gotten to the point where I've had to sit and be like, damn, what is this voice telling me I can't do it? Who is this voice like doubting my abilities and then and then having this feeling of hopelessness and like I can't do anything? <sighs> the route that I want to be able to take is to see an obstacle and go, okay next let's get over it let's breathe break it down and get over it next because I have my eye on the goal and there's nothing that can stop me and that's that on that but I've let things stop me very much very easily and I recently watched a sermon hear me out I recently watched a sermon on YouTube it's called girl get up and I will definitely link it in this week's description I will definitely link it below it's called girl get up and I truly believe this this sermon is a beautiful depiction of what Christianity should be and this we can go back to perception versus intention I feel like our perception of Christianity has definitely been skewed and we need to get to the root of the intention of what Christianity was supposed to be and it's it's especially crazy because a lot of us have been fed Christianity through the intention and perception of the person giving us the information. So the person, the pers- like the pastor, for example, or the bishop or whatever, whoever is preaching, they'll look at the Bible, they'll interpret it for themselves and then give it to you to go on to, to, to live your life with. When it's like, why am I living life through your interpretation of the source? Shouldn't I interpret the source for myself? You're perceiving this through your own life lens with your own experiences. And I'm not you. So it literally doesn't make sense for me. And I talked about this last week already, didn't I? Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. So I am oh, having so many thoughts about Christianity and about college that I'm just like, what was the intention and what is what has become my perception and can I change my perception to fit me like can I get back to the intention of what college was supposed to be can I get back to the intention of what Christianity was supposed to be and take responsibility for my perception and change how I perceive something because I don't know if y'all know I've talked a lot of shit about Christianity on on the internet I've talked a lot of shit about Christianity but now I'm looking at it and I'm like hmm maybe it's not that bad maybe it's not that bad maybe it's the way that I'm perceiving it and the way that I've been fed it through media also so I need to take responsibility and read this junk for myself look at Christianity for myself and come up with my own conclusion all in the name of thinking for myself which I would really like to acknowledge high school rolling for it because that's something that high school rolling really did from one seed y'all from it's still hard to believe that from one idea when I was in high school one idea I really was on Twitter and I was like I want to think for myself because I noticed that my opinion changes whether or not something I find out something has more or less likes And I was like, that's not right. That seems, I'm easily swayed. Let's change that. Let's fix that. I want to think for myself. And now I'm here. So thank you, Roland, because it was that seed that was planted that has grown immensely to where I am now. And it's so important to look at how far you've come because it's so easy to get caught up in how far you have left. But even then, you can change your perception of how far you have left. And I've been trying my best to do that. It's all about practice, y'all. It's all about practice. All of this stuff that I tell you, it has not it has not happened overnight. It takes practice, and I still practice because I don't know what it is in the air, but sometimes you just got to revisit shit and go a little deeper. That's what retrogrades are all about. I truly believe we're not the only—ooh, hold on. I'm congested. 
we're not the only ones creating our lives it's i don't know it's just so irritating to hear you create your reality you create your reality okay but so does the collective consciousness so do the planets um positions in the sky so do critical race theory so do all of the police brutality so do all of these other things so these all these other energies that are around you it's not just you creating your life you are not the only person in the world you are not the only energy in existence you are not the only thing affecting your life you are a co-creator you co-create your life so take responsibility for what you can't control and leave the rest and trust that it will be controlled to your highest good okay yeah i'm starting to preach now thank you for making this far if you did i'm back on my shit and i would just like to say fuck that thought fuck those thoughts that say that i can't do it that i've lost the sauce that i've lost the energy and i should give up never give up the only reason i got to this point and that can be said for literally any thread in my life and i'll 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 talk about threads at another time but the only reason i could get here let's stick with the the podcast the only reason i could get to this point where i'm starting to preach and i feel my energy coming back one is because i believe that there's someone who is there for me who will watch this who will listen to this to this point and and still find worthiness in what I'm saying and value in what I'm saying even if I'm not like even if the energy's not completely there at least to at least that's what I think you know because you're not always thinking what I'm thinking and that's a whole nother thing you should really like follow me on TikTok I talk about shit like this all the motherfucking time and I I feel like I can tell I'm starting to go all over the place because I can see how everything literally connects and it's a blessing and that's it it could be a curse it could be perceived as a curse but I choose to see it as a blessing in truth anyway and now here I am not I've ventured so far off I don't know what I'm okay yeah fuck that voice that said I couldn't do it the only reason why I was able to get here is because I didn't give up and stop recording and go maybe I'll just record it another time or maybe I'll just wait till I'm feeling a certain type of way to to continue recording and it's like no no absolutely not absolutely not you show up you show up regardless you know why because anything worth doing is worth doing poorly and that's on episode 13 I don't know that's on one of my motherfucking episodes go watch it go listen to it anything worth doing is worth doing poorly and now i'm here i'm back baby yeah fuck the despair disease for real fuck the man i want to define something for y'all let's define despair because that's what this episode is about okay despair the complete loss or absence of hope And this will take me back to what I was saying with um, the sermon that I watched. It was such a good sermon with the intention of like, of you getting up out of the despair disease, of you letting go of past and generational traumas, of you letting go of shit that's of people and and experiences that, that, that pushed you down, that said you couldn't do it. It's, it's like, fuck all of that. Get up. Fuck all of that. Like, do what you gotta do, feel what you gotta feel, and then get your life. Get up and get your life. I hope y'all can feel how serious this is for me. Because I have felt in the arms of despair for a very, very, very long time. And I've had that video. I've had that video in my watch later playlist for a while. Like, like a good year, almost. <laughs> a good year and I finally for some reason because y'all I could, oh my god oh my god I'm really finna say fuck being like linear in this fucking podcast I'm so for real because I just I'm sorry I can't I don't know I gotta go with the flow and this is the this is the way the flow goes I'm sorry everything in my life everything is magic the magical is ordinary and the ordinary is magic perceive that how you will that's best for you but what that means for me is that the synchronicities the angel numbers the things working out for me all of that is normal like that's normal shit that's not big deal shit of course I'm grateful and thankful you know why because I'm grateful for the the littlest shit I'm grateful for the atoms that make up my body and that make up this earth plane that I'm sitting on so I will always forever be grateful for the synchronicities and the things working out for me but it's just like that's normal 
that's normal for me. That's that's regular life. Like, that's not hot shit. Like, that's regular life. Like, cool, great. I was expecting that because that's how that's how shit works. That's the ordinary. The magical is ordinary, but the ordinary is magical. And I feel like what that means is just that what's mundane is magical. Like. I think we shit on things being mundane a lot and we get bored easily when we have peace and stuff. But I think the point might be to say that those times, those times where things are quote unquote ordinary, those are the times that really show us the immensity of the present moment and we should cherish them. And I don't know, look, look deeper within those mundane things. I don't know that's just that's just my current understanding of it I'm sure that I will develop a greater understanding of it soon but yeah that sermon was in the name of like self-improvement psychology trauma getting better and I think that's the that's the angle all interpretations of the bible should go because why are you preaching this comes from Tiana she was like why is our pastor preaching and talking about these kids on tiktok these days where in the bible does it say anything about that where does the bible where does it say anything about that and I feel like your duty as a pastor as a government official as a person on the supreme court you need to leave your biases out of your job that's not what you're here for you're here to serve completely so you know what that means moving your ego and your assumed identity out of this out off the side move it to the side and preach what you came here to preach objectively but is it possible for a human to be objective i think so i don't know (laughs) i think i'm pretty objective or maybe my subjectivity is objective. I don't know. I'm just I'm just not really I'm going to come here with all the facts, all the opinions and be mindful. I think the the closest a human can get to being objective is being mindful that you're speaking from your life experiences, that you don't know anything about anybody. So, it, making judgments is just useless. And to just be mindful of your own biases and to acknowledge them when you're saying things and to be honest and real and authentic. I think that's the closest to objective a human being can be. But anyway, the sermon was really good. It's only 45 minutes long. And to some people, apparently that's long. But to me, it is not. Because I sent it to my sister and she was like, I couldn't watch it. It was too long. I was like, girl, 45 minutes. But in her life and her experiences she's so busy and things 45 minutes is is a pretty is a pretty big chunk of time to take out to me I got out the shower and I was getting ready for bed and I was like where can I fit this in and I was like okay we can I can do it now it was a really good sermon and what I realized from that sermon is that you got to take the bible with a grain of salt you cannot take that shit literally it's all metaphors And I feel like this generation and maybe the generation before us, I don't know, maybe the social media, anyone on social media, I don't know, with the platform and a mouth. It's just so easy to like agree with what's most popular instead of looking at something for yourself. And this happens a lot to me when it comes to artists and music like Meek Mill, Olivia Rodrigo, some other bitch. I listened to the internet and didn't give those people the time of day. And only sometime later when I did give them the time of day, I realized I missed out on like, or not missed out, but this is a really great artist. Like this is a really great artist. Meek Mill is a really good rapper. Olivia Rodrigo, her shit hits. Her music is good. I feel like you can just, or at least I, I have the ability to tell when something is just good. When something is just good and has value and it's just good. Olivia Rodrigo's album, what's it called? Bitter? What the hell? What's what's her album called? Sober? How long? I'm going to look for it. It's brutal out here. It's brutal out here. What's it called? Good for you. No. Sour. Sour. This album is amazing. It's it's insightful. It's honest. It's authentic. It's real. She did that shit. And if I had listened to the internet, I wouldn't have found that out. 
and it was only through my friend Courtney. Shout out to Courtney. He listens to music um, regardless of what people think about the artist because it's his life and he does what he wants and he likes the music that he likes and he find, he, he just listens to music for himself, right? And he has amazing music taste and it's just so amazing to see someone oh big lotto that's another person had i listened to the internet i would not realize that lotto is a really good rapper and an amazing person like i don't know it's just so easy to hop on the bandwagon of what one person thinks and and then forget yourself and not do your own research but i really appreciate jabari because he really helps me think for myself it's really amazing. It really is amazing. Like, he's not phased by social media because, number one, he doesn't have any social media. He was like, that shit is not for me. I'm unplugging, and I respect that so much. And it makes me wonder, like, it makes me really sad for artists themselves who have an online reputation because this one person had a few people who who agreed, and then more people who agreed found it. It's I just, I think the moral of the story is don't take what you see on the internet as truth. All you see is a couple people who have found that idea and who agree with it. And it can be it can be a lot of likes. It can be it can be I don't know, what's a lot of likes? I'm thinking of a million. But I feel like when it's a million, it's safe to say that like that's a general consensus for real. But when something has like 30k, 86k likes, it's so easy in our minds to take that as truth, but it's that's not true. All that all that that proves is that the people who agree with that have found this post. That's it. Oh my gosh. And that helps me feel a lot better about what I create, especially on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and my podcast. It's not that my shit isn't good at all. It's just that the people that agree with it haven't found it. The people that it's for haven't found it. And it's so wrong to say that those people aren't out there because the analytics aren't showing that immediately. It's just that my shit is taking time, they're taking their time, and we will find each other. Because I posted something on Instagram. I posted this reel that was like, when I drive past my house and don't turn in, but the person, and I know it's my house, but the person behind me doesn't know I live there. It wasn't that wordy, but that's what I was saying. I was like, I hope people relate to this. Like, I feel like it might just be me or, or maybe a couple thousand people, a couple hundred people will find this and be like, oh, they agree. That shit is at 40K views now and 10,000 likes. And that happened over a couple weeks. I thought something being viral happened immediately. I don't know. My experience hasn't been like that. Don't take another person's experience as truth. I really thought no one would relate. Like, I don't know. I thought no one would relate, but so many people do, and it feels so good because... I'm not the only one and a lot more people relate than I thought and it it makes me realize there's a lot of people in this world like your audience is out there and I know it's a valid business question when you're starting a business and it's like is there a market for this is there an audience for this the answer is yes have y'all heard of the red pill community that shit is crazy shout out to Carl I'm not saying Carl is a part of the red pill community but shout out to Carl. There is there is an audience. <laughs> there are people out there across the globe that when amassed make up numbers. We focus on the numbers so much and I get it, it's valid, but it's like don't let the numbers define your worth, bro. Don't let the numbers lie to you and tell you that what you're doing isn't working. It's just that you haven't found your people. Your things have not found your people. That's all that that means. Your people are out there. Don't let the numbers deter you. Don't let nothing deter you. Don't let these obstacles that are set to make you stronger deter you. You look at those obstacles and you say, fuck that shit. Get it out the way. Overcome it because I got shit to handle. I got shit to do. Fuck despair. Fuck losing hopelessness. Fuck my my current physical reality saying one thing. My inside says another. Can I get an amen? I'm finna be preaching for real, y'all. I'm finna be preaching for real. I don't know if I'm gonna use the Bible as my as my as my source material, but I'm finna I'm, I be preaching. I be preaching. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs>
But the thing is, High School Rolling was that beast. Like, High School Rolling, bro, when I say that bitch was ambitious as fuck, and I'm saying, like, she didn't leave, she didn't let nothing get in her way, she was gonna get all A's regardless. And I mean, look, I'm not saying I want to be high school rolling. I just want to take elements of high school rolling and bring it to present rolling because I'm not going to fuck over my health for a grade. Like we don't have the same values, but the energy and intention is the same. I get what I want no matter what. I get results no matter what. It's not, mm, I hope this happens or I'm leaving it up to chance. Um, if I succeed, cool. If I don't, I guess. No, success is a choice and I choose it. I'm trying to come up with a rhyme. Success is a choice and I choose it. Uh, obstacles too and I lose it. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't, I like my things to make sense. I don't think that's saying what I want. I mean, it does, you can get it, but like, I want it to be clearer. I'd be an amazing editor. If you need an editor for like a paper or anything, hit me up. Like, I'm really good at making things clear and asking the right questions. And I really think all of my experiences and just being who I am has helped me a lot. Because talking to kids has helped me become the best conversationalist ever. <laughs> I can get something out of somebody if I wanted to. And that's that's really cool. That's really cool. But yeah. High school Roland was that beast, and I appreciate her. Sure, her health wasn't a priority, but when Roland said she was going to do something, she did it. And that's what I've been missing, bro. When Roland said she was going to do something, she did it. And I'm not shitting on who I've been the last couple years at all. I've definitely been taking my, like, going with the flow route. That's cool. That's cool. But... We don't go with the flow when it comes to our success. We don't go with the flow when it comes to what we want. Tunnel vision, I'm getting what I want, period. And I'm not going to share what I want because some of you bitches be haters and I don't need it. (laughs) But if you've been feeling like you've been leaving your success up to chance, no, you don't do that. We don't do that. You don't listen to Roland's perspective and you leave your voice, your success, what you want, the life that you want up to chance. There's variance. There is going with the flow sometimes. There's there's removing your ego to learn a new lesson. There's there's dropping what you think should happen today so that something else can take place because that's just the way things are going and it seems to be out of your control. So let your ego go and go with the flow. But tunnel vision believing that everything that's happening you going with the flow in some occasions you you putting your ego aside all of that leads to where you want to be all of that leads to 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 the prize you know they say i on the prize that shit has never rang more true for me than today and last night eyes on the motherfucking prize and don't let nobody come into your life and let you take your eyes off your motherfucking prize. And you know what? I'm hungry as fuck, bro. Nah, I'm going to take a break. I was going to get into it, but I'm hungry as fuck. I'm sorry. I'm going to go eat. I've been talking for 40 minutes. I'm going to go eat. I'll be right back. I'm back. I had my Chipotle leftovers, and I'm feeling free, feeling fine, feeling flirty, feeling 30. <laughs> now... I listened to the last few minutes before I took my break and I was saying not to let anybody come into your life and let you take your eyes off the motherfucking prize. And I'm specifically talking to my women here. I feel like women historically, and I'm sure the intention, like why this began, it was for a good reason, but a lot of women are no longer in situations where being a people pleaser is the only thing keeping them alive. Or, or so I think, or so I think, huh? Well, if this is applicable to, I guess, okay, I'm speaking, I, I'm speaking for women in the U.S. I don't know. Generalizations just don't feel good to me anymore, ever. Oh, fuck. To the women who, whose lives aren't dependent on being a people pleaser, I'm talking to you. Like, you're not going to die. No one's going to kill you if you are, dang, it makes me sad that I might be talking to someone whose life 
does depend on that. I'm sorry. Damn. Oh, well, that got dark. I don't know where to... Damn. Pivot, Rowan. Pivot. Who? Okay. If you are blessed enough to be able to live a life where your health and well-being is not dependent on being a people pleaser, and maybe you can start small, but if you're, like, dating, for example, or looking for a companion, or I don't know, what the fuck, I feel like women historically are not taught to have boundaries and standards. They are not taught to put themselves before anyone else. They're taught to put themselves last, while majorly men are taught to put themselves first because their mamas put them first, because their egos are inflated and they think they're the best thing in the world since sliced bread. And you know what came before sliced bread? Women. So anyway, um, <laughs> my point here is, my girls, it's hard. It's really hard. It's so it's It's hard and it's like foreign it's a foreign concept to me which I'm learning to uh, take control of when it comes to my life but like don't let no one come into your life and you stop doing the things you were doing before they were here for them and the biggest thing I can think of is a sleep schedule I thought it was just me but there are actually other ladies in the world who understand that like self-care comes first and if that means a sleep schedule then that means a sleep schedule baby I can't see you after this time because I'm asleep oh I gotta get off the phone sorry I need to go to sleep and it just sounds so weird because like if you like someone like okay like just just this one time and then the next time and then the next time and now your sleep schedule is fucked up and you had things to do the next day and now you're tired as fuck because you was on the phone with this nigga who ain't had nothing to do the next day It's not fair. So I made a TikTok. I'm going to play it. This is the TikTok. I'm just going to play it. A lot more thinking. And I really used to think, uh, no, I, I think now that, okay, so I'm thinking about how when someone new enters your life, how you may, like, move things around for them, even though, like, they are not solidified in your life like you're just getting to know this person and all of a sudden you find yourself making space making time moving things around for this person they're not doing the same for you why and I was just thinking like it sounds harsh but if there's space in my life for you you'll feel it and if there isn't you won't and it's okay like I'm not gonna move things around for someone I just met for someone who I'm just getting to know, like, you don't have that importance, you're not, you don't have any weight here, and I think women especially, no, maybe not, maybe just insecure people tend to give others a lot of weight before they've earned it, Mm. and end up hurting themselves when that's not reciprocated, when it's like, you come first in your life. You're going to be with you for the rest of your yes. life. Stop shifting around for these people who have just gotten here. Because best believe they're not going to put you first like you've been putting them first. You put you first. Stick to your goals. Stick to your sleep schedule. Like, be unavailable. Not on purpose. Not intentionally. But don't intentionally fuck yourself over for another person who's not going to do that. I don't know. There's a delicate balance to everything, but I'm just thinking, like, it sounds harsh as fuck, but, like... And you definitely have to go, like, case by case and apply this to you in the way that makes sense for you. That's what I'm saying when it comes to, like, Christianity. And maybe the same can be said when you're getting something from a pastor, too. But there are churches where it's, like, what the pastor says goes, and that's, like, law, because they're the direct communication between you and God. And it's, like, you could literally just go meditate. You could walk out that motherfucking church building and go meditate. I don't know, like... But take what they're saying with a grain of salt, too, and morph it to apply to your life. Not to... Don't morph it to bypass accountability and responsibility, but make it make sense for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could say, like, don't fuck up your sleep schedule, blah, blah, blah. But if you don't value your sleep schedule, then that doesn't make sense for you. And that's cool. You don't have to value your sleep schedule. It's your life. Me, though, my sleep is very important to me. Very important to me. And I used to feel like 
if I didn't mess up, you know, I'm just rolling, keep going, keep going. Like, we'll hang out when we both have time to hang out. Like, I'm not going to cancel plans for you until you've earned, I don't want to say earned it, but like, I don't know. I think it, I just find it very easy to forget myself when I meet someone that I like. And that's not healthy. But I'm scared. I thought, or I think that that's love. Mm. I thought that that was love. Love is changing yourself for the person so that they won't leave. Love is overly expressing your feelings so that they know so they don't leave. And I would just like to add, I know it's real common for, like, (laughs) girls to want reassurance. Like, tell me that you like me. Tell me again. Like constantly reassure me and that's cool but I would just I would just look at your intention for that and I was driving yesterday you know like I do and I got an insight you know like I do when I'm driving and I realized I only like reassurance because I'm insecure like because if we really talk about it your actions will let me know whether or not you like me simple you don't have to tell me you don't have to tell me it's just that I'm insecure and maybe your actions aren't showing it. So I need you to compensate and tell me over and over that you like me. But it's like, I know you like me. So why do I keep needing that? It's because I forget and I think that you change your mind and I'm insecure and I'm not enough. So tell me that you like me and that I'm enough. Validate me. But if you genuinely like hearing it, cool. But you got you to gotta figure yourself out and see like, is it because you genuinely like hearing I like you? I just don't see why you would need that. But it's it, I wouldn't see why you would need that because this is my life and not yours. But I just realized I only need that reassurance constantly because I'm insecure. Okay, next. Because how would they know? Like, if they don't know, they'll leave. <laughs> abandonment issues but it's just like if you're here you're here if you're not you're not and it's okay because I got me no matter what yep hmm I feel like that's a weird stance to take when you're a woman who likes a man especially I don't know because I just for some reason deep down feel like I'm supposed to quit everything for you And if I start to put me first, you'll get mad and you'll leave. That's what it is. I feel like if I start to put up boundaries and say, oh, I don't like that and ask you to change, you'll you'll leave because I'm scared you won't change and you'll leave. But flip side, if you say you don't like something about me and I think you're more important than me and I want to keep you in my life for whatever the fuck reason, I'll be like, oh, my God, okay, I'll change and then I'll be miserable. And it's like, we don't do that anymore. I don't know. I feel like it might just be generational, you know, things instilled in our DNA that have just happened for eons. But it's really time to let that shit go. And there are women out there who will not put anyone before them. There are some selfish-ass, boss-bitch-ass women out there. And I love that. I love that. I love that. And it's not the same as saying, I'm independent. It's not. It's not that. I don't even know what that is, but I've had conversations with men where they're like, women love saying that they're independent and blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, that's different. I don't know how, but that that's what you're talking about is a woman who's like still insecure and doesn't, I don't know. It's not the same. I'm talking about being a woman who is focused on herself until she's not, until someone comes into my life to show me how. Well, first of all, okay, I have space to focus on somebody else because I'm good. That's another thing. Like, if you're not good with where you are in life, I really suggest not looking for a partner. I really suggest not looking for a partner. And if a partner so happens to find you, great. It was supposed to happen. But when that partner finds you, also keep working diligently toward it, what the life that it is that you want to live. Please. It's very important, please, because 
you cannot chain this nigga down in your life to stay. They might leave. You don't know. So you have to sit with that uncertainty. But what is certain? The only thing that is ever certain is that when you wake up, God willing, you going to be with you. In 10 years, God willing, you, you are going to be with you. In 15 years, when you look in the mirror, you know who going to look back? You, not that nigga, not that bitch. You. It's going to be you. You're going to be with you forever, so better make it a good place to be. And I love that. Some people hearing that, that might make them really sad because they don't like themselves. But I love myself. I went to the Ch- the Chipotle restroom and I realized, damn girl, no, it wasn't. It was wild, wild. No, where was that? I don't remember what restaurant it was. But I went to the restroom. But I was looking at the thread of like relationships as people age. There was relationships with your parents, relationship with your children, relationship with your coworkers, and like your life partner. Towards death, the person you sp- and like how much time you spend with these these groups of people. You spend a lot of time with your parents as you're a child, and then less and less the older you get. Parents spend a lot of time with their children, and then less and less the older they get. You spend so much of your time with your coworkers, so make sure where you work is a place you want to be, because you're spending so much time there. And also, apparently time with your parents sharply declines after like age 20 so make an effort to talk to your parents if you love them and then and also I guess your children if you have them like these are these are trends these are social trends so do your best to to beat them I don't have the information in front of me but I'm sure it'll find you somehow and then time spent with your partner until death Y'all are spending the most time together. And so I was like, oh, maybe having a partner is, like, important. Because I definitely was on that, like, I'm independent wave. I don't need anybody. That's that's what they that's what the men were saying, the men I was talking about. I don't need anybody. Yeah, that's 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 an interesting issue. Because I get I get that no one likes to depend on anyone for stuff. And I don't blame the women that say that. Because uh, I don't like saying it's rare, but I don't know how else to say it. It's rare to find a self-aware, emotionally intelligent, communicative, um, adoring, and whatever else you want in a man, genuinely man, who you can trust and put your trust into. Especially if you've had many experiences with niggas who are not like that it gets harder and harder to believe that there's a nigga out there for you but that's exactly why you put yourself first you put your emotional health first your spiritual health first figure out your values and your standards what you're willing to accept and not accept and then even if you like a nigga so much and he do some shit that you won't accept leave you have to cultivate self-trust so you can trust yourself enough to leave when that nigga's acting the fuck up in a way that is non-negotiable for you. I'm not saying pick up your bags and exit day of. I'm just saying you know what you want, you know what you don't want, and you get a taste of what you don't want, and you sit in there and stay in? Because why? This is as good as it's going to get? Bye. You know why that's that's as good as it's going to get? Because you're not looking for nothing else. Because you're accepting that. The universe gives you more of what you accept. I didn't think that TikTok I made was really going to go anywhere because I feel like I wasn't making a lot of sense. But maybe I need to stop thinking that about myself and put some respect on my motherfucking name. But a lot of people felt that. And I I was surprised to see people saying I needed to hear this. And you're saying what a lot of people need to hear. That makes me really happy because I'm going to link this podcast in the comments and tell them to listen to the second half or the whole thing because it's good. But The second half, where I really talk about putting yourself first, no matter who enters your life. Putting yourself first unless you have a reason not to. Like, when you have kids, okay. 
Like you don't you have a being that is completely dependent on you. You cannot put yourself first. You have to put that child before you always. Unless you're willing to, you know, give that child some some issues. And that's up to you. I'm not going to judge whether or not you're you're willing to do that because I understand the need for having your own self carved outside of your children. I get it. It is what it is at the end of the day. At the end of the day, it all just is what it is. You can accept it and move on. Move to the next step. Move forward. But yeah, don't let no one come into your life and take your eyes off the prize. And that's why I say get to know yourself before you even think about, you know, getting into a relationship with someone. And dating and being in a relationship are not the same thing. Dating, you're talking to people, going out, having a good time, enjoying your life, eyes on the prize. Relationship, you have weight now. What you say matters. Like, what you think, what, like, what things that I do that you don't like, it matters because we are in a relationship and we are committed. We are committed to each other. And until there's a huge reason why we no longer make sense to be committed to each other... I will try my best to, you know, within my limits of what I'm willing and not willing to negotiate on when it comes to who I am and the things that I do, like, I'm willing to love you enough to stop doing something that you might not like. Like, it's okay. I'm not going to die. That's cool. But I'm going to be so for real with y'all. I'm not willing to do shit like that for a stranger. I'm not, because you're a stranger. You're a stranger. Why would I stop doing this because it makes you upset? I don't give a fuck. I'm sorry. I know that sounds really bad. That sounds really bad, but I literally don't give a fuck. You know why? Because it's taken me a long time to be selfish. That's why. That's my intention. And you perceive it as what you perceive it as because you don't know me. You don't know my intention. You don't know why I don't give a fuck. You just think, oh, that's mean. You don't give a fuck about me, blah, blah, blah. But also recognize that I'm a stranger and I have no obligation to be nice to you. And I'm genuinely a kind person, so me saying this is really funny. But just just take the... The situation is not important. Like, the specific is not important. Take the, the broad, overarching theme here. Changing something for a person you just met, a stranger. And it's like, who are you? Like, stay mad, for real. Stay mad. And everything has this balance, and situations vary, all that, all that kind of stuff, but... I'm just tired of being a people pleaser. And I'm a person. So why is it that I please everyone but myself? Can I get an amen? Yo, if you don't listen to this podcast and shout amen at the top of your lungs, I don't want you here. <laughs> I need you to shout amen. I need you to say amen quietly. What? Just say amen, man. Say amen. I accept what you're saying. I accept this energy into my being, Roland. And, and that's all I'm here for. That's all I'm here for. I'm so glad that I pushed through all of the feelings I was having. And now I'm, like, at the point where I've set a good foundation for myself over the last couple of years. And now it's time to do a lot more action, a lot more solar plexus work, a lot more boss bitch shit. Like, I'm working my ass off lately. And I love that for me. Because that means I put value into my life and into my dreams. Because the foundation is so important. A lot of people don't understand what goes into the project that they see. The finished project that they see. So much went into that. It's really crazy. Social media is crazy. A lot of people do not see what went into this this final product. And they want that. And they don't want all the things that came with it. And it's like, that's that's bogus. That's bogus. You're going to be real unhappy trying to get to a, a place you want to be without putting in the work to get there. You're going to be real sick. And the better the thing is that you want, it's law. The more work it's going to take. It's law. The more, maybe not work, but the more it's going to take to get it or the more time. Good things take time. That is not a fucking understatement. That is not a cliche. It's the fucking truth. Good things take time at least for me maybe I'll say for me I won't say it's, I don't know I don't know I don't like I don't like making making hard accusations or like hard like I don't know I don't know I have my own qualms I have my own things 
please dm me if you were feeling anything this episode please i'm trying to get dms from strangers because my friends won't support me (laughs) no i just called you out for real and if you feel called out then i'm talking to you and if you don't then i'm not talking to you so if you're a stranger dm me i need it thanks i'm not talking to to you tiana tiana loves my podcast and me and i love tiana tiana told me something the other the other day she was like i love you so much and i was like even though you know all my flaws and she was like i love you even more than i love you even more since i know your flaws i like i love you more i was like oh okay I'm going to end that there because <laughs> I'm not trying to get into that. Maybe another episode. So stick around. Yeah, that's that's kind of everything I wanted to say. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to go back to what was I, I was saying in the beginning, the despair disease. I'm going to bring it all back around. I went on a huge tangent there, but I feel like I got that off my chest. It needed to come off my chest, like... It's so easy to lose yourself when new people come into your life, but you must put yourself first. I done said everything I needed to say on that. I'm I'm satisfied. The despair disease has had a grip on me for a very long time. I have lost myself. I will admit that when it comes to, like, ambition and goals. I have so many passions. I have so many things I want to do, but I don't put the worth and value into those things and then the energy into them to make them a reality. Because I I start having all these feelings and all of these thoughts that are like, I can't do it. Why do it? Who wants to hear it? Who wants to see it? What's the point? And literally everything I see, everything that I can see, everything that I adore, all of the projects and the music that I adore, that came from a person just like me. What is the difference between me and another person? They believed in themselves. That's it. And I have been praying to believe in myself, y'all, for, like, a year. Okay. Yeah. This, at the beginning of the year, March-ish, is when I really started focusing on, like, believing in myself. Because I don't. (laughs) It's really hard for me to believe in myself for some reason. And I don't know why. Someone called this the devil. And that takes me back to the sermon that the lady was talking about. I'm definitely going to link it. Go listen to Girl Get Up, especially if you're a woman. Especially if you are a female person with a womb, please. Please go listen to that sermon. It's only 45 minutes. It's not a long time to me. I don't know. I think I like being mindful, but there's also balance between being mindful and not saying too many caveats. I don't know, because I like being mindful, but it's also like, fuck your perception. Damn. Will she ever find balance? Will she ever find balance? Anyway, at the beginning of the year, I don't know. I think maybe it's because Emery really burnt me out first semester, really first year. And it was the second semester where I finally started feeling like, okay, I can handle this. I can do this. And then the pandemic happened. And I was thrown out of all sorts. I was thrown in. I was thrown. And ever since then, I have found it so hard to believe in myself and in my dreams and in my own personal goals. But I'm getting back to her. I'm getting back to her. In the sermon, the girl calls this like the devil, like that voice going to war with the devil. And so I was like, what is, you know, I've been thinking, like, what is the devil? What, what is it? Because I know it's a concept. I know it's a concept. And so I was trying to understand it because it came about for a reason. Like, and I know we all, don't, we don't like the devil. Like, we don't like what it represents and stands for. But I think it's just our experiences with the devil instead of, like, what it was actually intended to be. So I'm going to read from this book that I found. Damn, loud as fuck. Anyway, I'm going to read from this book that I found when I was babysitting the next day after listening to this sermon, y'all. Like, it's crazy how the universe, like, 
it's the unseen things that are so divine and real like it's just it's everything is backwards on this earth and it's just really crazy and if you don't believe in god stay away from me i'm so dead ass like if you don't believe in a higher power in some unseen intelligence stay the fuck away from me or maybe not so i can convert you i'm just playing i'm just playing anyway so I'm going to read the whole thing because the sermon also touches on Adam and Eve. And it was really interesting. The fact that I found this book, y'all. The fact that I found this book. And it's crazy because we don't usually, the kid and I that I babysit, we don't usually play in that room that we were playing in that day. But the mom was like, this is where we're going to be today. So, you know, there's some toys in the bin. And I was looking for toys. Hold on. I was looking for toys and then I found this book and then I opened the book and I opened the book to ex <laughs> this is what I opened the book to maybe go listen to the sermon and then come back to this podcast episode okay but anyway this is what I listened this is what I read and turned to Adam and Eve and the devil the story of Adam and Eve is not an ancient myth it is our story we were created from dust and water and sent to this world not only to love and worship God and return to heaven, but also to become a manifestation of heaven on earth by reflecting God's qualities of love and mercy upon all creation. As the prophet Muhammad said, adorn yourself with divine qualities. Okay, first of all, I would like to point out that there is a lot more Christian people my age than I thought. I did not know Christianity was alive and well like that. Like, it surprised me when I went to GSU's campus. There was, like, a gratitude board in my friend's dorm building. And so many people were like, God's love, God's grace, uh, my father in heaven. I was like, whoa, a lot of people believe in God. That's really interesting. Okay. Both men, I'm reading. Both men and women are called to be mirrors of God on earth and to work to get together to create harmony and peace for all people. Just as a pomegranate seed cannot grow into a tree without soil, and soil cannot birth from itself pomegranate fruit without a seed, the divine masculine and divine feminine complement one another on the path of blossoming the soul. <sighs> if you know me, if you've <laughs> been around, you know how, like, aligned that is for me that's crazy i just made a video on the divine feminine and masculine like go watch that on youtube or listen to it it's episode it's episode 32 i mean it's episode it's episode 33 and i actually made it a month to go today that's crazy it's crazy how when you make something in the present moment i personally wonder like how it's gonna be time from then like, how it's going to be, like, let's say I make something in the present moment, like this episode, right? No, no. Specifically for that epi that that thing that I wrote, I, I put so much work into that, y'all. I did so much research. It's, it's like years of experience put into that video and episode. And it was like such a, a, a huge birth because it took so much time. It took so much experience getting it right. I had to record it twice bro editing was fun but it took took time you know as it does and that's cool and all it, I didn't it wasn't that big of a deal but it, my point is it took a lot of work it took a lot of creation a lot of thinking a lot of energy to make that thing just as it does to make a kid that's so crazy and elephants are in gestation or are pregnant for two years isn't that like that's amazing elephants are my favorite animal but anyway, once I birthed that out in the world, I post-publish, I finished it, did the thumbnail and everything, and I let it go out into the world. I was like, I took a, a big breath, like a, <sighs> I released it. I birthed this creation, this project that I've been working on for a minute. It took me days to write it out because it was just, oh my God, so much was going on. I needed to structure it. It was crazy. Anyway, I looked at that and I was like, I'm here now. It's crazy, like, that this is going to be in the past soon. And there will be things that I have created that go on top of this. Like, this is a part of my, portfo my portfolio, my thing. And it's the same as when you post a picture or you looking back at your pictures and you, you realize that that picture was once at the top 
of your feed and now you have all these other things that are above it and it's like did you know that all of these things were going to be above it like when I look at artists page and I look at like their first post or their posts before I, w- I was like there was a time where this was the present moment like SZA's control there was a time where she just released that last night does she was she aware of all of the things she would do after that I don't know it's so weird it's so weird it's so weird because sometimes I'm scared to like put things out in the present moment because I wish that they were in the past already I don't know I feel like if you're an artist you can relate I'm gonna keep reading Men and women are not physically identical, but they are equal in value in the eyes of God, for the soul has no gender. Ain't that some shit? It's in this... And also, y'all, this book... Let me... I didn't even tell y'all what it was. This book is Secrets of Divine Love, A Spiritual Journey into the Heart of Islam. Islam! By A. Helwa. Islam. Islam. Like... I'm sorry. Everything is the same thing in different languages. Engineering is the same thing in different languages. Singing is the same thing. Dancing is the same thing in different languages. It's all so beautiful. It's all ripples of itself. The Big Bang never stopped happening. It's still rippling. Because it's infinite. Oh, my God. Just like an orgasm. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. Men and women are not physically identical, but they are equal in value in the eyes of God, for the soul has no gender. As the prophet Muhammad says, verily, women are the twin halves of men. In fact, the word for Eve in Arabic is the same as the Hebrew word Hawa, which comes from a root word that means source of life. In essence, every time we reference Eve, we are reminded that although the prophets of God that were mentioned in the Quran were men, without women there would be no prophets born into this world. This is why women are seen as the bridges of creation between heaven and earth. The Quran does not just honor the holiness of both men and women as the chosen representatives of God on earth, but also teaches how to overcome our greatest enemy, the devil. The devil or Satan in Arabic is called shaitan, 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 and may also be referred to as Iblis. I just want to take a moment to say thank you and express my gratitude to the unseen and unknown and known and seen universe. Thank you so much for guiding my steps and guiding everything that happens in my life to the places and knowledge that I meet and go, the places in my mind where I can travel and get this information to bring out to other people. Just thank you. Because what the fuck? How is it that everything I need comes to me all the time, every time? How? I literally did not know when I would record this week, y'all, but here I am. Here I am. The thinking that goes on, I value my brain, man. I value my thinking. I am a genius. I'm going to say it till I'm red and blue in the mouth, in the face. Anyway, I'm just grateful. I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful. Next. The word Iblis is considered to be the devil's actual name and originates from a root word that means to give up hope, to despair, to be hopeless. In essence, Iblis is the one who incites hopelessness by attempting to deceive us into believing that we are bad and unlovable based on our actions. In traditional Islamic theology, Iblis is not seen as a fallen angel because angels do not have free will and so they cannot sin or disobey Allah. This is where it gets interesting. The Quran describes the shaitan the shaitan as a jinn, a creation of God made from smokeless fire that is part of the gabe or unseen realm. Gaib? I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Gaib? Gabe. Although we cannot physically see the jinn, similar to human beings, they have been given free will. In other words, there there are both good and bad jinn. The shaitan is not the opposite of God, but a creation of God. Whereas some spiritual paths suggest there are separate gods of light and darkness that balance one another, the Quran states that Allah is one, has no equal opposites, and possesses infinite qualities of pure goodness that perfectly complement one another. 
I agree. I'm not going to go into it, but I can see that. But I also... Uh, this is my Libra Mercury, I swear to God, trying to play both sides and be diplomatic as hell. That's so wild. I'm going to keep going. The Shaitan has no power except for what Allah allows him to have. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's taking so much to keep reading and not stopping and, like, give y'all what I'm thinking. Even though the... Sh- oh, my God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just feel like me not being able to find my fucking... My God damn, me not being able to find my microphone, I can't, I like, I'm not even mad because nothing happens without the universe's say so. Nothing happens without the universe's say so because best believe when the universe doesn't want something to happen, it won't. If you're not meant to get that job, you won't. If you're meant to get something else and you're, and you're um, lowballing yourself, the universe will not let you get that low balling ass motherfucking job. It won't. So you must be able to apply that to the other side of the coin. Whereas where things happen, they're supposed to. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Things happen as they suppo- as they're su- they are supposed to. No matter how you feel about it. No matter how you feel about that statement. Things happen as they're supposed to. Because me saying that when I first lost, when I first couldn't find my uh, microphone, I would, been, I would be like, girl, shut the fuck up. Please stop fucking talking to me. That's not what I want to hear right now. And I literally would not feel that because I would be so annoyed that I couldn't find my fucking shit. But the fact that I'm talking about that whole ex- experience and example, I understand why it happened now. But the point isn't to be happy when you understand it. It's to be happy when you don't understand it. It's to, it's to still have joy and peace and calm, even in the midst of chaos, when you don't understand why things are happening the way that they're happening. Just trust that they are happening the way they're supposed to happen, and they'll work out. That's what you have control over, and it takes practice. It takes practice, but you can will control over how much peace you have in a given scenario. And... <laughs> Yeah. Even though the shaitan, the shaitan, even though the shaitan, the sh- oh my god, even though the shaitan is considered a clear enemy to man, his creation still has a holy purpose. <sighs> Just as finding the hole in a leaking boat is a blessing because it shows us what needs to be patched, the divine mercy bef- behind the existence of the shaitan is to show is that he shows us where our hearts are not in alignment with God. In fact, the 20th century spiritual master Sheikh Sidi Muhammad al-Jamal refers to the shaitan as the fire at the gate of the garden because his purpose is to confront and purify our base qualities. As the Quran says, Satan threatens you with poverty and orders you to immortality, Im- immorality, while Allah okay Satan threatens you with poverty and orders you to immorality while Allah promises you forgiveness from him and bounty and Allah is all embracing and all knowing some mystics can some mystics call the shaitan the guide of darkness or the gatekeeper of heaven because it is his voice that tempts us towards the lower qualities of the ego such as envy lust greed and jealousy there was more but that's where I stopped taking a picture I like how they said lower qualities of the ego instead of saying qualities of the ego as if the ego's all bad. It's not. But if you're here, you know that by now. Yeah. So reading that, that was, um, I I cannot, I'm going to write down the gratitude I have for being as led as I am and put it in my gratitude jar. I have one of those. You should have one of those. It's really nice. Not should, like it's wrong if you don't, but like it really helps. It really helps. I believe everyone should have a um, a gratitude jar. Gratitude is the attitude. It truly is. It truly is. But anyway, I personally don't believe God is something that's outside of you, okay? But I'm willing to, like, put that aside to read this and gain the insight that is from this book. And that goes for the Bible as well. You got to take things with a grain of salt, man. You can't take things literally and then take them personally. Like it, 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 it's not gonna work. It's not even about picking a struggle. It's about letting both of them struggles go. You can't you can't read the Bible literally and then get mad at it. 
because that's not even what it's saying. Because you're taking it literally. Pick a struggle and then let both of them go. Yeah, I felt that line where it said Satan still has a holy purpose because that that makes me feel so much better. Like, I'm going to actually listen to that girl get up sermon again because I really needed that. I really need like I had my hands up in my room saying amen, y'all. And I felt like an old woman and I felt uncool. But seeing so many of my peers be Christians makes me feel like it's okay and cool to, like, believe in God and stuff like that. Because that was an issue that I had. But I was just, I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like the girls that get it, get it, and the ones that don't, don't. And it's okay to still believe in what you believe in. Either, even other people might be looking at you as crazy. Because I definitely was looking at kids who believed in God like, dude, do you even know how to think for yourself? Like, what are you doing? And maybe there are some that do. I mean, maybe there are some that don't, but there are some that do. And I hope that they never gave me the power to make them feel a type of way about what they believe in. And that's all. That's what it's all about. Don't give people the power to change how you feel about yourself and the things you believe in. Yeah, like the Bible, the Quran, all of these religions, they have points. Like, they have points. They have points all in the name of rising, raising your consciousness, having good character like Ifa. Oh, my God. Like the African traditional, the the ATRs. Good. It's. I personally am on earth to find balance and have good character. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think by the end of it all, I won't even worry about having good or bad character. Damn. And if I'm here now. What is 40, 20, 20 years from now, Roland, 41 year old Roland going to be like? I can't imagine. Has life beat your ass? Life has been beating my ass. But you know what I said when I woke up this morning and when I got home last night? Life, you've been beating my ass, but I'm finna beat your ass right back. I'm finna beat your ass right back. And you know, I'm not even mad at you. I'm not mad at the quote unquote enemies. I'm not mad at the devil. I'm not mad at, at the demons. Because all of you bitches serve a divine purpose. Did you know that? You probably did. But regardless, you serve a divine purpose, ho. At the end of the day, you only here to serve me. (laughs) At the end of the day, you're only making me stronger because I choose to overcome you. There was something she said in the sermon that was like, you are crafted and created by the creator there is no weapon formed against you not even your in your mind that can prosper like you need to remember who you are I need to remember who I am I need to remember not who I am because I feel like who I am is an ego question I need to remember what I am I am a divine creation and if I were not supposed to be here I wouldn't and to think I gave anything outside of myself the power to make me feel like I couldn't do what I was born crafted and created to do crazy 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 and it's gonna take a little work definitely and I'm fine with that but I want to get to a point where my confidence is unshakable there is nothing in my external or my internal that can convince me that I'm not who I say I am that I'm not who I was made to be And I will say this and go, but I've said this on my TikTok. One thing I didn't like when it came to church, and I just feel like if people explain this, it would just go, it it would just be so much easier to get across. But saying you need to be who God made you to be, like you've come on this earth to be who God created you to be. I hated hearing that. It sounds awful because what about who I want to be? But now I realize that those two things are the same exact thing. Who you want to be and who, quote unquote, God wants you to be are the same thing because you are God. You are not this body. I will say this over and over. You are not this body. You are not your thoughts. You are not your mind. You are not your your feelings. You are not your emotions because you can be aware of these things. Well, maybe you can't be aware aware of your mind, but I feel like the mind maybe is God collectively. I think everyone's collective consciousness collectively and all living and non-living things 
that is what God is. And we all work together to make um, synchronicities happen. Because that lady putting me and her kid in the other room led me to finding that book. Like, does she even know what she what she played a part in? And so I wonder, do I even realize, am I aware sometimes of the synchronicities in another person's life that I play a part in? I wore my Banneker High School, <sighs> y'all. I'm starting to understand why people cry when they talk about their Jesus, Lord, and Savior, their God, because I'm fit to. I wore my Banneker. <sighs> but I need someone to be listening and telling me, take your time, baby, take your time. I need you to tell me to take my time. That it's all right. It's all right. Get it out. It's all right. Take your time. Roman, take your time, baby. Take your time. (sighs) My little siblings were looking for something for school. Okay. They were looking for something for school. So I went in the attic to, to find something to help. I found my old senior, um, sweatshirt like my own senior my senior hoodie right I found my senior hoodie I was like oh it's getting cold let me bring this back out it's red root chakra like let me get into it let me just wear it and see if maybe I don't know what I was doing I was just like let me bring this back out because it's cold I don't wear red and I don't wear black often I'm starting to wear black a little more but I don't wear um, red often because growing up my mom was like that's those aren't good colors to wear and I don't know I'm kind of figuring out my own my own relationships to those things but also being mindful that she's not just completely wrong and trying to like find a balance between the two because maybe for other people wearing red works but maybe for me it I don't know messes with my spirit or something I don't fucking know but I just I genuinely don't even feel attracted to red anymore like wearing red but black I feel black I feel protected when I wear black I feel like I don't know, because there was a time where I also felt like I was absorbing all the negative energy around me because that's what I heard black did. But I don't know. I don't know. I wear the I feel like my body and spirit and mind, they're aligned. And the things that I do now, I can trust them a lot. So if I feel like wearing black, there's a reason why. And if I don't consciously understand, I trust my subconscious does. And it's okay. We'll go from there, you know. I'm trying to finish this quickly, but there's just, like, more things to say. Please trust yourself. I'm going to just leave it there. Please trust yourself no matter where you are. Just trust yourself. Okay, next. So I found the sweater, and I wore it a couple days later. I was like, it's really cold. I remember this hoodie being really warm. Let me just wear this and get out the house. And when I went to Chipotle, I took a picture. And someone DM me, Cameron, my goon, my motherfucker, my that's my that's my bitch for real. Cameron, number one supporter. I love Cameron so much. Oh my god, Cameron. Oh my god. Just I be thinking about you. I be thinking about you. Don't forget it. I be thinking about you. Anyway, Cameron slid up and was like, You went to Banneker? Like you graduated from Banneker in 2019? I did too. I was like, ain't no way, dog. Ain't no motherfucking way. Cameron and I found each other shortly after I started my podcast and on Instagram and I think maybe YouTube videos I don't know but we've been talking we're like friends now and we talk about things she was the only person that responded to my Rose perspective survey Uh, so fuck everybody else and thank you Cameron but it was just so crazy that I wore that and she was like she almost wore hers too and then she saw that like we went to the same high school we've been we've been around each other for years and never knew like we've been in the same vicinity and never knew but I say that I don't even know why I say all that to say but like you never know what synchronicities you're playing for other people right you never know what synchronicities you're playing for other people and It's just really wild because I wore that hoodie as soon as I subconsciously started thinking about high school Roland, you know? And I truly believe, like, I was driving home yesterday or driving to wherever I was going, and I realized, like, at this point, everything that happens in my life, everything is material. Everything is material, it's all material for for this podcast like it's all material 
It's all material for a story to be told. Don't be too attached to it. It's all material. That's that's funny and ironic because it is all like material, like dense and physical. But yeah, it's all material. Like like show material, story material, art material. It's material. Take it as it is. Yeah, it's crazy how my subconscious be popping out in my conscious sometimes. Like it's crazy how I wore that sweater. And I started, like, really, really thinking about high school Roland and saying thank you, honoring her, trying to get back to some of the some of the the things she exhibited. But with just, like, more respect for myself, I have different values, but I'm not going to say her values were wrong. They just were. And I just have different ones now. And I'm so proud of her. Like, when I tell y'all nothing got in Roland's way, nothing, because she really didn't have the capacity to to understand this shit was affecting her for real but I don't know she was a sim living on autopilot but still getting shit done and I just I just want to bring that energy back into my life so I'm gonna go listen to that that sermon again I I highly suggest you listen to it I highly suggest that you start looking at Christianity and all these other religions as languages for the same shit that spirituality is doing for you and just take it with a grain of salt and have the capacity to take it how the person is giving it, but interpret it in the way that makes sense for you and that is not harmful to anyone else. But also balance, because you never know. Something is always harmful to somebody. So, But you know what I mean. I feel like you know what I mean. I'm talking about like, I don't know. I'm not going to explain it. You know what I mean. Whew. I'm very proud of myself for pushing through and recording this episode my computer finna die i'm really proud of myself y'all because i when i i really almost gave up i really almost gave up it's so easy for me to give up on myself but i have to fight for myself because i'm worth it i have to fight for myself because i'm worth it i have to put value into into my ideas because they they come to me to be expressed through me there's no there's there it's not possible to not be enough it's not possible it's not possible to get an idea for to create some kind of type of art and you say I'm not like I don't know how to do this enough that idea came to you understanding your current level of skill understanding how you see the world that idea came to you it could have went to anybody else but it didn't and if it did go to somebody else and they execute it What's the difference between them and you? Y'all are both human beings, are you not? Put some respect on your motherfucking name. Put worth into your ideas, man. It's not going to be easy, but you have to fight through those feelings. I want to say more, but my computer's about to die, and this is about to be two hours long. So I'm just going to say it on TikTok. So please go on to TikTok for what I'm about to say. And it has to do with controlling your thoughts versus letting your emotions flow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Roland's Perspective. And I will hear you in the next one. Bye.